Hey everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flater Mouse. Here's the scenario. You're trapped in your house, the bad guys are approaching. All you have is a Swiss Army knife, duct tape, and a big jar of pennies. Today we're going to find out how pennies work as supersonic projectiles. We'll be using two different types of pennies. These older ones from the 70s weigh 47.8 grains, heavier than most 22 bullets. Yet the newer pennies weigh about the same as an average 22 bullet. Now there's two really big problems with using pennies. First of all, they're about 15 thousandths of an inch too large for the bore of our accelerator. The second problem is flat discs like pennies have terrible aerodynamic properties and you never know where they're going to actually go. Both of these issues can be solved by reshaping the penny into kind of a dome shape. Aeronautical engineers call this the blunt body concept. We've also reduced the diameter by about 26 thousandths of an inch. We actually have a little room to spare. And to make things even more confusing for you, we have two different shapes, the shallow dome and the deep dome. These two shapes have completely different aerodynamic properties. The deep dome is more or less auto-stabilizing, keeping the projectile flying in a straight line. The shallow dome was a big surprise. It caused the coin to tumble through the air. This is still a big improvement over just the flat coin. For the test, we did a random mix of 7 to 10 pennies per load, and we'll be propelling these at a velocity of 1600 feet per second. Alright, the first target is at only 7 yards. That's defensive range. Let's see how these babies do, though. We got this one loaded with 10 pennies. <laughs> it actually did a lot better than I expected. In that big flying mess you'll also see a gas seal, cork wad, and we have one flyer. Kind of flying like a frisbee, doing some weird stuff, but for the most part the majority of those pennies, nine of them, impacted that piece of wood which is about uh, six inches wide. And the combined force of those nine pennies really threw that block pretty well. Pretty impressed so far. After I got home I split the block of wood to see what happened inside and pretty impressive. We got almost two inches of penetration, maybe one and three quarter inches or so. Got a metric scale there for people who don't know what an inch is. We'll take them apart and I'll try to hold the camera steady here, but as you can see some of the uh, pennies are really mangled up, others are almost undamaged. Very strange, but uh, I'm impressed so far. Let's take another seven yard shot and see if our luck holds out. We got a little smaller target, the good old tater mouse, and here they come. Nice tight group this time. Now realize that I could have been pretty sloppy with the way I bent some of these pennies. Some of them were uh, bent a little more than others, some were offset a little bit. And uh, with a, maybe with a proper jig, I could get better consistency, but so far, not bad at all. Now I hear you asking, how would these do at further distances? Let's find out. Now this load only contains seven pennies. We have one flyer there. The other uh, six are just kind of flying in formation, kind of drafting behind each other. And to be honest, that was what I was really hoping for have them all fly together. Again, seven pennies. We got five of them flying together right there. Two flyers, and one of the flyers, just one of them, actually hit the jug. Now the good thing about this test is it shows you the energy of just one of the pennies. And it wasn't too bad. Back to our water drop test, we could see how the pennies draft behind each other. We could see that the pennies are a lot more stable when they're flying in a group instead of flying by themselves. Alright, back to 20 yards and again with 7 pennies. Now out of just pure luck or bad luck, none of the pennies hit the block. In this shot, we have a really good example of one of the shallow domes just spinning through the air, probably a couple thousand RPM. Now, when the pennies passed the target, we had maybe a 18, 24 inch spread. Not terrible, not terrible. All right, center mass. 
In this test, we had nine pennies. Didn't seem to help matters. All of them missed. <laughs> At least in this shot, we have a lot of good examples of the deep dome pennies self-stabilizing and kind of rocking back and forth. Very similar to our tests when we dropped them through water. The water works really well to predict how things will work in supersonic environments. Next we'll use a larger target, maybe we'll have a better chance of hitting something. Yeah, there was ten of them in there, right? There was ten in that one, yes. So we've got one, two, uh, three, four, maybe five. That could be a water. And a keyhole. What did it do to the pipe? One of them hit the pipe, right? Oh, look at that. A little ding in it. Not bad. I'm sure that would hurt. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It just spread. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Oh, here we go. Did you find something? Probably the one, yeah, this would be the, probably the one that hit the pipe. Get a little white on it there. It's still good. You can Put that in a gumball machine. Oh, gumball, gumball machine. Nothing takes pennies. Not these that days. That is the most useless coin ever invented. There you go. Overall, the pennies had a much tighter group at 7 yards. By the time they reached 20 yards, they started really spreading out. We seem to have a little better results using fewer pennies. The 7 penny shots seem to stay together a little better. More is not always better. And by using seven instead of ten pennies, you're saving three cents. Now, what, what's really ironic here is it's a lot cheaper to shoot pennies, actual currency, than spending money on buckshot or slugs or whatever. Now, these were probably one of the cheapest rounds we ever shot using uh, reclaimed holes, which were free, a primer, which is, I don't know, five cents, a little bit of powder, a wad, and a few pennies. Now for the sake of the internet lawyers out there who have already furiously typed in that we've committed a federal crime or whatever, uh, it's not illegal to deface a penny. So there you go. You'll have to find something else wrong with the video though. Coming up we have Tim Hamilton's Spherecon we'll be testing out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.